What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 180. And we start on today's episode off with some player training where as you can see Schwartz has now hit 76 overall and Zabala has now hit 82 overall as we continue to train his finishing up. And for our first game of today's episode where we take on Freiburg, a brief look at the league table where once again as you can see we drop down to fourth place in the Bundesliga but a win will take us back into the top two here as we take on this side who just 10 days ago came to this very ground, the Bay Arena, and stunned us by knocking us out of the DFB Pokal quarterfinal. No one saw it coming, I certainly didn't, and when we were going to the dressing room at halftime, leading by a goal, the odds on Freiburg turning it around and winning the game would have been very, very low indeed, but that's what they did. They knocked us out, and today we were looking for revenge. So, first game today's episode against Freiburg, right now struggling in the Bundesliga. They need a win in this game as well, if they're to stay in the top tier of Germany. Germany. And in the first half, I really struggled to create chances against them. And with three minutes to go before the break, well, this was very interesting indeed. Jonathan David, our new Canadian, goes to strike from a tight angle. The shot is blocked, and as he goes to uh, follow up the attempt uh, after the ball is going outside the area, I mean, he catches the leg of Spielman. But there is no way that is a penalty. I don't know what on earth the referee was thinking there. How on earth could he give that as a penalty? Absolutely ridiculous call. And as this is an old school career mode save, I'm doing things like I used to do in yesteryear. And therefore, we chip it down the middle for the goalkeeper. If he stands still, he can have it. If it goes in, it goes in. As you can see, the goalkeeper stands down the middle and claims it pretty comfortably. In fact, I'm yet to score a penalty like that since the save began. It's like it's like the AI know when I've uh, when I've been given an unfair penalty. So yeah, no goal and uh, rightfully so as well. It was never a penalty and I would have felt really cheap scoring there. So still 0-0 heading into the break and in a game of a few chances had we not managed to find a goal at some point I would have been fuming. Freiburg almost got themselves in front there 12 minutes after the restart and if it was for Lunin bailing us out they would have taken the lead. So still 0-0 but on the stroke of the hour mark a golden chance to take the lead and we would do just that. The man that won the penalty Jonathan David turns in this ball from Kurzweg and fires us into the lead just past the hour mark and he has had a really good start to life here at the Bay Arena. He scored two goals in our big thumping 5-0 victory away at the Allianz against Bayern Munich and he scores here as well. Lovely little ball across by Kurzweg who whenever he steps onto the pitch always seems to get an assist or a goal. In this one it's the former as he sets up David who puts it into the back of the net with a really cool finish there. So 1-0 to Leverkusen we have the lead and in the 84th minute Freiburg almost scored an equalising goal. Luna made a really really big sader after I surrendered possession very cheaply. What a stop by the Ukrainian there, bailing me out as it was still 1-0. And from the clearance, Steve Zabala plucks the ball out of the sky, sprints down the left-hand side, steps in field the ball roll, picks out Maya, and at the far post, he's arriving late. Arnie picks him out, and Ivan Tony wraps the game up and makes it Leverkusen 2, Freiburg 0. And I'll tell you, man, the relief on my face after this goal. Freiburg was so close to getting themselves a leveller, and up the other end, we go on the break and wrap the points up. Leverkusen 2, Freiburg 0. We will become 3-0 uh, later on as well. Freiburg really capitulated towards the end of the game here. We scored our second through Tony, and then Shaw set up our third goal, chipping it to Steve Zabala, who made a lot of difference coming off the bench. Lovely first touch to beat his man, and the finish as well. That's the second chip goal he scored this season, Zabala. And I barely score chip goals nowadays, but that's the second one this season for the Uruguayan. A lovely goal as well with a weaker left foot there as it nestles into the bottom corner. Final score, Leverkusen 3, Freiburg 0, and we get the victory here and get our revenge on the side that knocked us out of the cup just 10 games, uh, sorry, 10 days ago. So 3-0 the final score, and I must say as well, it was a really, it was one of those games where the scoreline did not reflect accurately what went on on the pitch during the game. You know, Freiburg, Freiburg had definitely made a claim to at least got a point in this game. They played very well, and like we saw against them a couple of games ago, I, I really struggled against them in this game, and had it not been for Lunin, we probably wouldn't have won this game. He made some really big saves, but we did come through with a 3-0 victory. The scoreline very harsh on our opponents there, but we get our revenge, and we get the win. That's the most important thing. So 
Torino the final score and following that I thought I'd show you the top scorers assists and clean sheet charts in the, in the Bundesliga right now with uh, Loon in second in the Golden Glove race sure leading the way with more assists than anyone else in the Bundesliga how nice is that to see and Ivan Tony catching up to Timo Werner just a couple of goals behind now in the race for the Golden Boot and after the win against Freiburg more good news as well you would have seen it very briefly Barry Walsh is returning from injury he's not ready to play just yet but oh Barry we have missed you big time son as we know this has been his best season in professional football he got the broken toe back at the start of December we've missed Barry big time and it's a relief knowing he's coming back to first team training duty he's not ready to start just yet but he's training once again and I can't wait till he steps foot on the pitch again because we, we miss Barry man he's been so great for us and Kurzweg to be fair in his absence has done really well but we would love Barry back on the pitch sooner rather than later so for our second of three games of today's episode staying in the Bundesliga now traveling away from home to the Veltins Arena to take on Schalke 04 will be a brilliant side to do a career mode with uh, away in Gelsenkirchen first chance fell to the hosts and they would score as well sent down the left hand side Ayer got himself in a little bit of a pickle not for the first time this season he's been a little bit unconvincing there loses his man ball gets played into the middle and this was very very close but the linesman does get it right he is offside and whilst he squeezes the ball through the legs of Andre Lunin the goal is correctly chalked off and it is still 0-0 so Schalke almost in front there had it not been for the referee's whistle and the linesman's flag they would have been so but from the resulting free kick we played our way forward and as Ollie Shaw picks out Arnie Meyer it's a first goal in a Leverkusen shirt for our new number 16. Signed him on deadline day for, I think it was 57.5 mil, maybe something like that from Manchester United, plus a 25% sell-on clause. He had a pretty unconvincing debut in the cup against Freiburg, but here gets our first go gets his first goal for the club and our first goal of the game. And Ollie Shaw with yet another assist. Two in two for Mr. Shaw. And in total, that's now four in his last three games. Shaw right now is just on one. And this man's been on one for a while, Kurzweg, but I didn't want to show you the replay of that shot because that was just bloody awful there. that was an Ollie Shaw type of finish there smacks it wide the post where he couldn't even hit the target as it was still 1-0 to Leverkusen but in the 36th minute Schalke would find themselves a level of through, uh, through Piccolini and how many more chances am I going to give this guy He's got to be dropped sooner rather than later, right? Emmanuel Ayer this season has just been so goddamn poor. And I'm absolutely gutted because he looks like a shadow of the centre-back he was back at the Stadio Olimpico with Roma. Ball gets chipped into the middle. Ayer controls it on the chest. And I'm hammering down circle like a man possessed. But he just stands there, watches the ball drop on the floor. And Piccolini holds off Meyer and volleys the ball past Lunin to make it 1-1 here in Gelsenkirk. And you might have noticed as well, straight after the goal, Ayer put his hands on his head because he knew he should have cleared it he didn't react on time and I've got to say, man, you know, since he got the ACL last January, it's been a calendar year since then. He's just never recovered. He's never managed to recover and shake off that long-term injury and get back to his form that he showed at the Stadio Olimpico. Ayer is just not the same player, man. And surely at some point, he's got to be dropped for the good of the team. So Schalke won, Leverkusen won. And in the second half, it was all Leverkusen. It was like a training exercise. Schalke doing everything they could to cling on to a point as they go in search for a European place in the final few games. What a stop there by Nubel on Ivan Tony as it was still 1-0 and late on five minutes to go once again the goalkeeper pulls off the heroics denying Rodrigo from close range as Schalke escape and it is still 1-1 in this game we were frantically searching for a late winner and Schalke were looking as though they could possibly hit us on the counter that clearance there was eventually gotten, gotten away by Emmanuel Alaya and as Marcus Vinicius puts his foot on the ball and finds Saar we had one final chance in normal time Ivan Tony gets around Luis with a lovely bit of skill then stops on a dime, beats him for good. One on Diop, turns him with a step over, and Tony! Oh, 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 Ivan Tony! My hero, my mate. How many times has he rescued us throughout the course of this series? Whether it be at the Blades, with Roma, with a Fledekau, or here with Bayer Leverkusen. How many times has he rescued us in late game situations and come up with a piece of magic, a piece of brilliance, and a late winning goal? Well, he's done it once again. An extraordinary solo run by Ivan Tony as he beats Louise, then beats Diop, and beats the goalkeeper to 
win it in the dying seconds of the game. Schalke so close to a big point in their bid for Europa League football next season, but Leverkusen win it right at the death, courtesy of the Shocker. Final score of 2-1, and because of that, you might have noticed during the game in the top left, RB Leipzig scored a late winner away at the Allianz Arena, and because of Tony's late winning goal, Bayer Leverkusen, with 12 games to go, are top of the Bundesliga for the first time this season. We are two goals clear off Borussia Dortmund and only ahead of them on goal difference right now. And that is the significance of having the shocker in our team. Sometimes it's just one player in your team that makes all the difference. Ivan Tony this season statistically is having his worst season since he left Sheffield United. But whether that be the case or not, you can always rely on the guy to come up big when it matters most. He certainly did there. And his late winning goal ensures that Bayer Leverkusen, for the first time this season, are top of the Bundesliga with 12 games to go. Win our remaining 12 matches and win them by enough goals and we will be crowned champions. In fact, win our remaining 12 and we'll be crowned champions no matter what because we've still got Borussia Dortmund at home to come. So yeah, 12 games to go and destiny is in our own hands. Easier said than done though, of course, winning 12 straight. But big, big win there away against Schalke and what a late dramatic goal it was. My hero, my mate Ivan Tony. I tell you man, this guy he's the best goal scorer I've ever had and it's not even close. Still third and final game of today's episode as we travel to the Basque region of Spain here for the first leg of the Champions League round of 16 where just 11 minutes in to the big Champions League first knockout round tie Jonathan David does it again. What a signing he's been from Chelsea for 62.5 mil I think it was and Oli Shaw does it again as well. Another assist for Shaw. It is now five in his last four games in all competitions, sprints down the left, what a ball across the ground as well to pick out Jonathan David and a Canadian smacks it home to make it 1-0 and Leverkusen have the lead and after the restart 13 minutes later, oh he's done it once again, Oli Shaw is just picking defences apart right now and getting assist after assist after assist, six goals in four games, there's no wonder Zabala said to Oli, mate come and celebrate with me, don't be modest, you deserve the praise because right now Oli Shaw has elevated his game to a new level and we are seeing the Shaw that we saw in our cu a final couple of years with Sheffield United. The man is just absolutely on fire. Six assists in four games as he rolls through Steve Zabala. I gave the Uruguayan the nod tonight and I'm so glad he did. Latches onto the free ball, runs through one on one. That makes it Bilbao nil, Leverkusen 2. And in a game of few chances, in the end, those two opportunities were really the only clear-cut chances of the game. That's all we needed. We were clinical, we were lethal in this game, and we get the win by two goals to nil. So heading back to the Bay Arena, Bilbao need to score at least two goals, otherwise we're through to the quarterfinals. I felt confident when the draw was made, and I wouldn't say we've got one foot in the next round of the Champions League, but we do feel very confident the ball is in our park. No, we are in the driving seat. But that will end today's episode of Career Mode, guys. A big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.